Okay, so now we're gonna go on and we're gonna do a PA wrist. So when we do a PA wrist, what you wanna do is you either wanna have your patient form a fist with their hand, you can have them grasp onto the edge of the IR. We're just gonna have Libby make a fist. Now you notice when her fingers are relaxed, there's actually space in between the IR and her wrist. As soon as she curls up her fingers and makes a wrist, it eliminates all of that OID. So definitely make sure you curl the fingers. You're gonna be centered right at the middle of the wrist joint. You want to include the distal one-third of the radius and ulna for this. Column eight down, side to side. Get the distal one-third. You will be able to visualize um, the metacarpals on this. A marker on the lateral aspect. You're gonna measure right where your central ray is going through. Make sure your patient has GP. Ask your patient to hold still and click. Going on to um, an oblique wrist. So we do external oblique, still centered at that wrist joint. Marker, you need to include the distal one-third. You'll visualize the metacarpals. You wanna be at a 45 degree oblique for this. Ask your patient to hold still and click. And then we're gonna do a lateral wrist. So lateral wrist, thumbs up. You want your patient nice and lateral for this centered right over the wrist joint. I can collimate side to side a little bit more, include your marker. You're gonna measure right through your central ray. Give your patient GP, ask them to hold still, and click. And then the last one that you guys are gonna do for the wrist is going to be the ulnar deviation with the 10 to 15 degree tube tilt. So you're gonna um, tilt your tube along the long axis of their arm. So I'll just start by doing that. Have your patient put their hand down so that they're in the PA position. I'm gonna have Libby move her pinky towards her ulna, so that's gonna be your ulnar deviation. And then when you center for this, keep long axis with long axis. And you wanna be centered right over the scaphoid. So where you see the little divot in your hand when you relax is approximately where your scaphoid is, so you'll be centered over that. And then you can collimate down a little bit more on this. Um, the bone that you're concerned with looking at is the scaphoid. When we do the ulnar deviation, you will still be able to see a small portion of the metacarpals, and you'll be able to visualize a small portion of the distal radius and ulna. Um, your marker, GP, measure right through your central ray, Ask your patient to hold still and click.